I think you better come see this gun in my hand for yourself. Falk Siljan, indescribable hero by virtue of the fact that he carries a gun, strides past the Verf Street Cafe, patrolling the gunmetal gray boulevards of Parabellum City. As he walks past, a phone rings in an empty phone booth. Hello? Falk, this is the wordsmith. I got something you ought to... Well, I think you better come see this for yourself. What is it? Just come to my place. How did you know I'd answer this payphone? I knew you'd be passing the Verf Street Cafe at about this time on your patrol. Good thing criminals don't watch you carefully or they'd pick up your habits and patterns. They could stage an ambush easy. I can handle them. You should really come see this. Are you afraid to tell me over the phone? Is somebody holding a gun to your head right now? Say lima beans are my favorite if you want me to know someone dangerous is listening over your shoulder. No one's here. Is it too hard to explain? What could be too hard for the wordsmith to put in words? Just get over here. It's not supernatural. Aliens? Something so unusual you don't think I'd believe it? Because I've seen more sorcery than you can shake a stick at. And I've witnessed the gamut of human behavior. I'll believe almost anything at this point. Will you stop? Get over here. I'm just trying to figure out why you're reluctant to tell me over the phone. You're going to want to see this. Is it an emergency or can I take my time? I can be there in 10 minutes by bus or 20 minutes if I hoof it. Fine. You want to know what it is? I'll tell you. It's... Wordsmith? Wordsmith! Roberto! gun in my hand will return after this message in your ear. Hi, Sister Indica here, creator and star of Blazed All Our Lives. We've got the cat fights of Dynasty, sassy humor of the Golden Girls, and the supernatural vibe of Charmed. Yes, we have witches, except they're like really stoned. If you love melodrama, comedy, and a splash of horror, check us out. Subscribe wherever you get your podcasts, and we'll see you in Misty River. You're almost too late. Where are the people you were fighting? There was no fight. Over the phone, I heard you straining. Oh, I had the phone cradled on my shoulder while I was pouring a bowl of Ranger Joe's. I kind of fumbled the bowl and then I was, you know, ah, oop, erf, trying to catch it before it spilled. Is Ranger Joe's some Tex-Mex variation on Sloppy Joe's? No, it's cereal. Ranger Joe Wheat Honeys. It's pretty good. It's pre-sweetened. You don't have to put any sugar on it. So who's Ranger Joe? Nobody. I think it's just a cowboy they used to sell the cereal. He doesn't have a radio show or comic strip? No, forget all that. Seems like a missed opportunity. Maybe they'll do it backwards. In another 10 years, they'll start a show devoted to this serial mascot. Now, you want to see what I called you here for or not? Sure, sure. Because you were almost too late. Sorry, I tried to bribe the bus driver to go faster, but he wouldn't. Plus, they got that pizzicato thing in the back of the bus where they serve food. Every time he pulls over to let people on, he has to make food. I thought it was a bunch of little bus lockers where you put in coins and you can pull out a slice of pie or soup or whatever. I mean, pre-made. Yeah, well, it's popular. So people step on, grab some food, and get off. Then the driver has to go back and prep more food so he can stock the little automat cabinets. It takes forever. It's over here. This is what you wanted me to see? Yes. Was I wrong? Was it not worth seeing? No, no, you were right. You couldn't have done it justice over the phone. I'm good, but I know my limitations. How long has it been like this? Five minutes before I called you. And it hasn't changed since then? Did you set it up like this? Of course not. That wouldn't be worth calling you. It's breathtaking. What does it mean? There's no deeper meaning than what you see right there. And the missus? How does the informatron feel about this? She hasn't seen it. I'll be honest, we don't have the typical situation of man of the house giving orders to his wife. She does what she wants. Usually I do what she wants. We both follow our careers independently except where it makes sense to share information. But this is non-negotiable. Where did it come from? Why is it in your kitchen? I have no idea. It's like a tableau. I didn't stage or pose anything, Falk. I just came in and saw that. Weird. 
eerie. Why do you say I almost showed up too late? It started to move. I didn't think it would last. Good morning, Roberto. Did you contact that stevedore as we discussed last night? Shh! No sudden movements. It could go off. What are you talking about? Why is Ziljan here? Has the World Crime Syndicate booby-trapped our pantry again? What I'm talking about is right there. Sweet mother of the divine. Easy, Jenny. Why have you set up this tableau in our kitchen? I didn't set up anything. I finished carving the pumpkin and set it on the floor. I rinsed the seeds and started roasting them in an oven. Then I set the bowl down next to the pumpkin. It's an ill omen for a marriage when one begins lying to one's spouse. It's all true. You set that orange bowl next to the jack-o'-lantern with the silhouette of a witch riding a broom on the side of the bowl? Yes. How long has it been like that? Five minutes before I called Ziljan. Maybe twenty minutes now. You called Falk Ziljan before you thought to call your wife. You're busy. I didn't think you'd want to see it. You didn't think I'd be able to take care of it. You thought it required someone who can summon firearms upon recitation of his watchword. Jenny, it's not like that. Maybe I should get back on the pizza bus and let you two work things out. No, no, I want you to hear this. Jenny, come on. You've spilled Ranger Joe's on the kitchen counter next to the telephone. You're lying to me about this obviously staged tableau on the floor. And worst of all, you... You don't think I can take care of it. I know you can take care of it. I've seen how gentle you are with your sidekick, Allie Catherine. My assistant. Sidekicks are for long underwear heroes, not information professionals. I put a saucer of milk outside the back door. That screen is still curled a little at the bottom from the World Crime Syndicate breaking in and booby-trapping the pantry. She must have crawled through the gap in the screen door and curled up in that bowl. A black kitten decided to curl up in a Halloween-themed bowl right next to a freshly carved jack-o'-lantern. Nothing staged? I swear! And you called Falk Ziljan to help because you thought it was a trap? Possibly covered in poison or a mutant creature that could be activated by someone whistling outside the window? No, I called him because it was cute. Hmm, I grant you that. Jen, we don't have to argue about this, do we? We're keeping her? Certainly. How can you tell it's female? It's so tiny. Ha, <laughs> looks like I got some information you don't got. Aww. <laughs> I think you better come see this. Episode 65 of This Gun in My Hand was written, performed, edited, and produced by Rob Norther. This episode and all others are available on YouTube with automatically generated closed captions of dialogue. Visit thisgunandmyhand.blogspot.com for credits, show notes, information on how to subscribe, and to buy my books, such as Little Heist in the Big Woods and other revisionist atrocities. What's keeping you from just describing the situation over the phone? This Gun in My Hand.